Hey guys, welcome back. We got another video today. In this one, we're going to show you how to be the MVP in Nuclear Winter on Fallout 76. Um, these are our top tips for winning and getting to the end. Um, we're going to cover quite a few things in here. Um, we worked a lot of hours trying to figure out what does the game look like, what does it feel like, and how does it perform, and the best things you can do to get to the end. So, the first tip we're going to talk about here is where to spawn. Now, there's a lot of choices on the map. I have circled the top three that we have found through 30 plus hours of playing. Uh, number one being Camp McClintock at the bottom. In the middle of the map would be the second one at New River Gorge Resort. And the very top to the north would be the third location. Um, nine times out of ten, I'm going to recommend Camp McClintock, which you can see we spawn there today. Now, whether you spawn at one of these three or not, um, always try to spawn inside of a building. It's going to give you the best odds of finding a weapon right off the bat. So you can see in here, right off the bat, I have a bunch of crates and bags, and there's a bobblehead, and just things to look through. And when you start, right off the bat, pick up everything you can. Don't be picky, just pick up everything. Because if other enemies spawned with you, you want to prevent them from picking up any weapons as well. So... Even if you pick up two or three of the same weapon, a bunch of pipe pistols or automatic pipe rifle or even melee weapons, just pick them all up, carry them. Um, if you do get over encumbered, um, go ahead and drop some things, it's okay. But the biggest thing there is you want to make sure you prevent other people from getting weapons and that you have something to knock off early people playing. So you can see here, um, I tried to throw a grenade but I didn't have one, so I meleeed into the air. And the reason I ran up there is I, one of my teammates in my mic told me um, that he saw someone on the roof. And you can see I ran down and got the kill because we were communicating. And that comes to my next tip. If you can, always play in a team. Even if it's just one other person you can talk to in a party. Um, if you get two or three others so you have a full team. That is the best advice you can have for winning one of these games. Um, if you're just playing with randoms, like you go in by yourself, get three random other people, you can't talk to them, you're all kind of thinking different things, it's kind of hard to play as a team when you can't talk to each other. So, uh, in this particular footage right here, um, two, so there's myself, which is HXC Dova King, there's Crisis King, and there's Bunny6092. All three of those, that's me and two of my friends playing together. Um, the other character um, is not in our team, and it creates some issues further on in this video, but it's okay. I'm playing with two other people, which really helps. Um, it helps you, you know, I need stim packs, and I'm out, and they can help you get them, or you've been irradiated with radiation, whatever it is. So play with the team. It's a big thing. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Next thing, always, always, always hit these nuclear winter... Um, loot terminals. So, anytime you go into one of these terminals, um, you're gonna have four choice. Well, you're gonna have three choices, but it's up from four options. So, if you get in, it might say reveal enemies, request stim pack, or request weapon. The fourth option would be request nuke code, which sometimes it does give you a nuke code when you do it. But my personal opinion is, especially early, go for those the weapon. If it says request a weapon, request that weapon. As you can see in this game mode, I got a minigun. And the minigun is really, really, really good. Um, the clip is really big. And um, you'll see a little bit of gameplay with me in the minigun in just a little bit. But here, this is another weapon I got from the machine. And this may be my favorite one in the game. Automatic grenade launcher. And it takes a little bit of getting used to if you've never used it before. But it... it it shreds. It's a really, really good weapon. And pretty much anything you get from these terminals, and I would say one of the most important perks you can have in this game type is the hacker perk and the pick locking perk. Because it's going to let you get into all the stuff that gives you the special weapons. Of course, there are animals that drop special weapons as well. But my recommendation is anytime you see one of those nuclear winter terminals, hack it, get into it. Get the weapon, or get the new code, or get the stim packs, or reveal the enemies on the map, because you can do that as well. Just do it every time, because it's going to give you an instant boost. Whether it's stim packs just to heal up, whether it's a much higher powered weapon right off the bat, um, 
it's really, really going to help you out. So another tip that if you have played Fallout before, you're going to know this. But what you want to do is go into your inventory, and let's say there's two weapons you want. I equip the radium rifle and the minigun. Once I've done that, I equip it in the other one. Left on the D-pad will let you switch between those two weapons. Um, through conversation with quite a few people I've been speaking with about the game and in the game, a lot of people don't know that the left D-pad lets you switch between the two weapons. So if you equip one, and then the other one, it'll be able to switch back and forth between those two. So you could have a long range and a short range, a heavy weapon and a small weapon, whatever you want, but the left D-pad is super, super helpful, especially if you run out of ammo and you have to switch to something and skip that reload animation. Second note, I'm sure many of you know about this, but right on the D-pad will auto-stim you. So you, if you hit right on the D-pad, it's going to give you a stim pack um, if, you're hurt, if you're hurting or whatever. And then up on the D-pad is going to open the wheel with favorited items from your inventory. Um, so you can fast switch to those. Now remember, I talked about the minigun and that heavy launcher, grenade launcher. But I also want to mention the radium rifle. The radium rifle is super, super, super good as well. Um, not only does it do just straight up damage to them, and it's not the most damage, but... When it hits the enemy, it also irradiates them. And of course, if you played Fallout, you know what the radium rifle is. If you have some history with Fallout, you definitely know what it is. Um, but in this game mode particularly, since it is against other players, um, it works really, really well when you get into a firefight. Because they can't hit right on the D-pad to stim pack up. Because stim packs don't get rid of radiation. Um, they either have to have a hotkey for Rataway or some kind of perk to help them out, or whatever it is. The radium rifle is really high up there with weapons as well. Um, when running in this game, um, one of the things I would say is you probably want a sniper rifle of some kind, or something with range, and something that shoots a lot of damage out. Now that's not always the case. In this particular match, I'm running a radium rifle and a minigun, which is perfectly fine. You put a lot of damage out. Um, one of the things I want to hit on real quick are the armor types. So there are four armor types, kind of five armor types in this game. Wood armor, scout armor, and marine armor are the most common. So you'll find wood armor everywhere. It's the lowest protection. Um, the second one is going to be scout armor. And then the third is going to be marine armor, giving the most protection. The fourth choice is power armor. And power armor is very good. Although I wouldn't recommend using it in this game type. And I know I'll probably get crap for that. But it makes you extremely loud. You can't sneak around. You can hear them coming from a mile away. Yeah, you can jump off the bridge. Or you can jump down a cliff and not die. But it gives your position away. And part of the end game with this particular game type is you got to sneak around a little bit. And if you're running around smashing your feet into the ground, it doesn't really do an advantage to you. I probably wore power armor out of one game out of the many, many games we played. So my recommendation there is, you know, get the marine armor. In this spot, you can see I'm wearing wood armor here. And the fact that I have the minigun with me um, helps me out here. So I'm looking around, looking for ammo, and I have my radium rifle on. And this guy just happens to run in behind me, and I get an easy kill. I figure, you know, right after this fight, I want to go out and make sure there's no one else standing around, because usually people run in teams. So I run, and I see someone out that window right there, and there's a guy in power armor. So you can see, I got the minigun from using the nuclear terminal. I only have wood armor on, and I beat that guy who is in power armor, and probably, I think that was an automatic laser pistol that he was using. So, you know, the best armor is good, this weapon is good, power armor is good, whatever, but I was just in wood armor and had the minigun and I tore through that guy and took just a little bit of health damage. So, there is a heavy emphasis on the weapons you use. So you want to use something heavy and big. From what I've seen, the end game, everything is about the heavy weapons. Everyone's using miniguns, gatling guns, grenade launchers, 50 cals. That tends to be the case. Of course, there are the people who snipe or have the radium rifle, which are good choices as well. But more often than not, I see those 50 cals and the miniguns, and that's what you want to shoot for. And the best way to get good versions of those, like I said, is to just 
hit that nuclear one turret target. And if you find the fifth type of armor, which is a hazmat suit, save the hazmat suit in your inventory every time. Because if someone gets to the end game and drops a nuke, you can run through that area, throw on that hazmat suit, and it's going to protect you from the radiation while all the other enemies in the area are getting irradiated and probably don't have resources to get rid of that radiation. Now what you can see here, one of the things I always recommend is there are mobs that are NPCs in this game. So mire lurks, ghouls, that kind of stuff. If you can take those down with a melee weapon, or just your fists, do it, because every gunshot gives away your position in this game. And like I said, you kind of want to sneak around. So what's funny here is, this is where we, we'll talk about playing with the team again, is we, uh, we moved over to this house and there's people down in the house just down the hill. I throw a grenade and I <laughs> throw it horribly and it hits the ceiling and comes back at me so I freak out. But my friend runs over there without any backup and goes down in the house and we're like, what the heck? So we run over to try to help him out. Um, and I tear through this guy with the minigun. Okay. My other teammate goes down, the one who was in my party with me. And I knock this guy down. Which was really good. But I didn't pay attention to my health. And I went to revive him. And I should have healed myself first. And I get knocked down by the Mirelurk. The Mirelurk knocks me down. And that was it was real disappointing. So all the three people I was playing with in a party are down and we can't do anything and this guy here our teammate just I don't know if he has an issue picking us up or something but just doesn't pick us up and walks away and that's one of the reasons why I would recommend always playing in a group with people you can speak with even if you're playing with randoms and you can get them all in the same party with a microphone it's gonna do wonders for how far you can get in the game now of course you don't always have that option so just do the best you can I mean you're not always gonna be able to play with a full team or um, be able to talk with everyone and that's perfectly fine but if you can get a full team together definitely do it every single time now so here uh, is some more footage and this is kind of an end game here and you can see we're in these trees the shading on the ground and in the game is darker which means hiding in it makes it harder for people to see you a big emphasis there is always use your shaded cover in your trees I know that sounds silly and very straightforward but there are times you can sit right next to an enemy in a bush and they don't even know you're there because it's shaded. Now if you sit in the bush that's not shaded, like like the texture isn't as dark or you're out in the open in the sun, you can be seen pretty easily. A big thing there is, you know, staying kind of in the dirt and hidden and you'll be able to survive a lot longer. Now I'm not saying camp out the whole game and sit on the sideline, it's not what I'm saying at all. But if you're moving to an area, crouch down, Excellent. move slowly. Um, like I said, get the power armor if you want, but it's going to be those huge steps and you're going to sound like a, a big old robot walking through the forest. As you can see, I'm using a laser, an automatic laser rifle here. Um, this happened to be an ultra sight one, which I got from the terminal and it, it's pretty good as well. Not, you won't always get, you know, crazy weapons from the terminals, but hit as many of them as you can. Okay, lastly, once you get towards the end game here, like I said, you want to be hiding in the bushes, things like that. But you also want to be looking for stim packs and stuff that people you have killed off have in their inventory. Stim packs right away, buffs. Because in this end area, what you want to do is take all the meds you can that buff damage resistance, damage output, radiation resistance, everything you can. Um, so you're buffing your attacks as much as possible. You want to go into your inventory, take everything you can. Um, don't double up on stuff like if you have two overdrives for example don't take both take one um, they're not gonna stack the way you want them to um, just take one of each med you have with the exclusion of rado instant packs save those for when you need those whether to take radiation away or get health what you really want is to buff up your attack so in these smaller rings as you can see here there's six people left in this ring right now um, and my team is four of them so if we can all buff our damage really high those other two guys won't even have a chance at us because we have so many more people on top of their team. But a big thing is, is, you know, if you are really good on health and you have a lot of stims, give your friend some stim packs or rattling or whatever he needs to make it through. 
because four of you is better than three of you, is better than two of you, is better than just by yourself. So preserve your team as long as possible. And my final tip here is drop the nuke every time if you can. A lot of people drop it on the like very small circle where the nuke ring fits over the whole circle. And that's fine, you can do that. A warning to you is if your whole team and all the other players are in the nuke zone and you drop it, you don't get a win, you get a stalemate. You drop the nuke, it kills everyone, all of your team, yourself, you will get a stalemate. Just be aware of that. But what we always do is drop a nuke. And we do a lot of work um, trying to get nuke codes together. And uh, I'll post a video shortly how to get a nuke every time and drop a nuke faster, but it's going to help you get the win. Because you want to get that nuke dropped before the ring is smaller than the circle or the blast zone because then your teammates can stay outside of the nuke zone and most people can't outrun the nuke circle anyway because it drops so quick um, that way your teammates stay alive and then you guys can finish anyone off who wasn't in the circle but yeah guys that's that's a lot of the tips we have um, what I'm gonna do is kind of create a summary in the description for you I'm kind of outlining the tips for you um, if you have any questions or anything let me know in the comments we put a ton of hours into this, trying to figure out what people were doing wrong. Other people play, we watched footage from other people, we watched our friends play. We played a ton. We kind of saw a lot of stuff that people were just missing that seemed very obvious. That will get you to win. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for all the support. We appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate everything you've done for us so far. We've got a ton of likes, a ton of views coming through, and some subscribers. And we really, really appreciate it. So if you like this video, don't forget to let us know. We want to talk to you guys. We want to play with you guys. We want to keep it going. So take all these tips we had for you and uh, go kill it in Fallout. All right, guys. See you later. Bye.